Hi, Brenna. Hi, Liam. It's Emily and Daisy. Hi, Daisy. I think that's how we start all of our videos, isn't it? Um, coffee enemas. I want to get you this little video so that when you're ready, you can jump right in. Um, I'm sure that you're a little bit curious just based on my hype and the board members who have participated and your friend who was talking about the good things about coffee enemas. So just jump on in, girl. Try it out. So um, if you haven't gotten your beans, just a quick recap. You want to get a light roast organic bean. Um, and it is one tablespoon of bean to one cup of water. And you're um, trying to get a quart in you. So that means boiling more than a quart so that after it's all absorbed or um, burnt off a little bit, you have your quart. So I use a heavy five cups. Um, it's weird it's because it doesn't always work out. Sometimes I end up with only like three and a half cups after that, five cups. And sometimes I end up with almost five cups. So it's, it's hard to gauge. I'm not sure exactly the science behind that. Um, if you don't have quite four cups, then just top it off with a little bit of water. If I'm going to do my, so I do them twice a day. So when I do mine in the morning, I prep my coffee the night before. It just makes it a lot easier for me to get going with my day to have the coffee ready. Um, and then if, for my evening, I brew the coffee about an hour before and just stick it in the freezer for about 20 minutes. Either way, I want it to be about 100 degrees when I put it in me. Not too hot. Definitely not too hot. Um, sometimes I do it a little bit higher than 100. I imagine that if my body temperature when I have a fever runs about 101, 102, that's safe. But 104 becomes unsafe. So um, 100 degrees is a safety guard a gauge. Uh, if you don't have a thermometer, I just realized that maybe you don't have a candy thermometer or a thermometer. Just warm to the touch is, is good. Um, so you've got your four cups. You pour it into your bag. You bleed the hose so that there is no more air in it. It's all coffee, just so you're not pushing that air up into your intestines. Not dangerous if you do, but it can get uncomfortable. You're trying to minimize the discomfort level just because that'll help you to hold it longer. When I say discomfort, I want to make sure that you're aware that it's it's not pain at all. It's uh, discomfort. It's gas bubbles that, you know, you can feel them bubbling up. If I feel them bubbling up, I find them and I give a little bit of pressure with a little bit of massage and it tends to dissipate them. You shouldn't feel pain. If you feel pain, stop. Um, but you just should feel the need to go to the bathroom is really the, the discomfort, like an extreme need to go to the bathroom. Try to fight through it. Try to just clench your muscles together because it will pass. You won't feel this constant discomfort. It'll be waves of like, oh, and, and then you feel good and you can hold on a conversation. Um, in the beginning, you might want to start off in the bathroom, maybe in the bathtub. Uh, definitely put a, a towel underneath you just until you feel exactly what it feels like. And then as you get more comfortable, you can relocate and sit in front of the television or wherever it's most comfortable for you. We've gone through this with every stage of Daisy, um, from baby who just nursed next to me to this little walking, talking, totally curious, on the go, go, go girl. So um, I give her a cracker, I barricade off all of the areas so that I know that she's pretty safe. My goal is to lay there the whole time, um, not, not run around after a baby. So, um, so you get yourself comfortable, you lay down, and you get it all in, and then you close off the clamp and um, pull it out. Just, again, to make it easier. Some people like to keep it in. And I don't because I have a baby who just wants to constantly grab everything. Um, I've also found that if I cover myself in, with a blanket and she can't even see that connector piece, uh, she doesn't even know it's there, so it's not an issue. So you lay there for your 15 minutes and massage your abdomen. Lay on your right side. Massage starting at the left and working your way all, all the way around. Maybe paying special attention to your liver area, which is on the right just below your ribcage. Um, and just relax and enjoy the sensations. And then after 15 minutes, walk or run to the bathroom and just let it go. And if you're feeling like there's still some in there, uh, massage your abdomen. Uh, if you still feel like there's some in there, there's a pressure point on your right calf. Just kind of massage all around. Mine is high on my right calf. When I hit it, it's, it's amazing. You hit it and things release. Um, so it's funny that there's a play there. 
in between our body connections. I've learned a lot about my body through this process. It's really fascinating. Um, and then I like to follow it up with a one quart water flush where I just put warm water in and let it out. Uh, that way, that if there is anything that's still in there, um, it'll come out and it won't cause cramping later in the day. Not a big deal if you don't do that. It's not actually part of the Gerson protocol. It's just my protocol. It's what I've learned through the years. Years? I haven't done them for years yet. But I am on 420. Um, this week marks about 420 enemas that I've given myself in the past seven months. Um, and then, please... Explain share with me your experience. Um, I guess uh, first wash the bag. You don't have to use soap, just rinse it. No, nothing from you, from your bum gets into the hose or anything. It's, so it's just coffee. Every once in a while I'll bleed, I'll give it a hydrogen peroxide flush. Um, other than that, I wash with warm soapy water the catheter and then just hang it to dry. Uh, you can reuse that catheter over and over and over again. It might get stained. Um, it's just staining from coffee. It's not staining from anything gross. If it does seem like it's starting to build up a phlegm, just get rid of the catheter and maybe just let me know. I've got a bunch of them. I can eat, I can mail you over another one. But please, yes, afterwards, I want to hear how you feel. Even if you feel crappy afterwards, I want to hear it. But I want to see it because um, I think that'll convey the most message. So uh, I, I must be forgetting something, but Daisy's needing my attention right now. So if you have any questions, please ask. If you want a Skype session, I'm around most, mostly during the week. Um, I try not to be on the computer too much when Kevin's not around um, and he's not around during the week. So uh, you, you can find me, Emily Gontelier, G-A-N-G-E-L-I-E-R, on Skype. Um, and bottoms up. Enjoy your enema. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing something, so maybe I'll do a follow-up video or just send you an email if I think of something that I'm missing. But... Um, don't be afraid. They aren't uncomfortable. They are a little weird that there's just this mental thing to get over, but they are powerful. I, through all of my health regimens that I have been really strict on and less strict on, this is the one that I am the most strict on just because it feels so good afterwards. Um, also pay attention to, to so you're going to be paying attention to your physical stuff that's going on, but pay attention to any mental or spiritual or um, just anything in all of your life and see if you can connect it to these enemas as being kind of like the pivotal moment where things started to dissipate. It did for me, and I'm just curious to hear about other people's experiences to see if maybe I'm reading into things too much or maybe I'm just making things up. Um, confirm or um, further convince me that I'm just crazy. Either way, I'm okay with it. All right. Lots of love to you guys. Daisy doesn't say bye yet, but I'll say it for her. Bye. Enjoy your day.